Namaskar, welcome to Late Edition. Tonight we'll discuss about early warning systems for earthquakes. We all know that uh, predicting an earthquake is, uh, we still haven't uh, found the science to do so, but uh, at least we are able to understand that uh, an early warning system is designed and can be designed and can give us uh, enough time to at least save our lives. Well, one such system based on uh, the difference between the primary wave and the secondary wave uh, produced by an earthquake, one is a vertical wave and the other is a horizontal wave, uh, can give us uh, people living about 40 kilometers away about eight seconds or more to at least save ourselves and other things. The Uttarakhand disaster is not only one of the worst in recent times, but is also an eye-opener for the need of a sound disaster alert system in the country. If floods are a giant killer, then the crisis with earthquakes are even greater. Around 7 million people have lost their lives in earthquakes in the last 500 years. Seismologists record around 20,000 tremors annually. India is highly vulnerable to earthquakes and about 60% of its area could face moderate to severe earthquakes. The period between alarm and actual earthquake is usually no more than a few seconds. It depends on the distance of the device and the epicenter of the quake. Uh, warning aise to warning sambhav nahi hai lekin technical and techniki roop se jo hai the primary waves always reach the system first and secondary waves follow thereafter the period between the arrival of the primary and secondary waves is the time available for an early warning system the system makes calculations about the time before the destructive s wave arrives at present the warning period is hardly a few seconds but research has shown that it can still make a lot of difference in reducing the number of casualties. Unlike other weather systems, predicting earthquakes is always difficult. Hopefully, with such an early warning system, the damage could be less. Bureau Report, DD News. And the person who has uh, designed that uh, particular system is with us here. We have uh, Jürgen uh, Schibelak, who has designed that system, a, a German uh, inventor. And we also have with us uh, uh, Mr. Chandan Ghosh from the National Institute of Disaster Management. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. We'll start with you, uh, Mr. Yogan. First of all, tell us uh, how much time do we actually, how much time can we have between the wave and the S wave? First, I must say the people have nothing time at the moment, and we don't talk about hours, we talk only seconds. But what you tell, 40 kilometers away, 8 seconds and more. Uh, and the most time we give alarm in Chile 2010 in the German school, 30 seconds was the warning time. And this was a lot of time before the air wave comes in the building. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chandan Ghosh, uh, in our country, we, are, we have about, what, 60% of our country is uh, prone to earthquakes, but uh, of course uh, not to a high magnitude. But there are some areas which are uh, in the Himalayas, for instance, uh, and we know that Uttarakhand is one area which has just received and had one tragedy, even though it was not from an earthquake. But uh, from that point of view, uh, how prepared are we for earthquakes? Uh, our country, yes, uh, we have experienced eight plus magnitude uh, earthquake four or five times in the Himalayan region. Uh, uh, last one was in 1950. And even if it happens even right now, uh, that uh, we are not prepared to that extent uh, because this 8 plus magnitude earthquake uh, which has occurred 1897, 1905, then uh, 1934 in Bihar, Nepal and then 1950 in Assam. Even if they happen even right now, uh, we can really imagine the kind of devastation that they are going to create because science seismologist has created some scenario especially uh, in the Uttarakhand or even Himachal area where uh, Kangra earthquake occurred. At that time, in 1905 itself, more than 19,500 people died. But over the years, in the last 105, 6 years, uh, the vulnerability, which is the serious concern for us, vulnerability of the establishment, establishment in terms of road, in terms of buildings, in terms of many other uh, uh, projects that which are coming up in that area, uh, vulnerability is an aspect that where we cannot comprehend the kind of uh, damages that will be would be expected. You're talking about that vulnerability, Mr. Yogan. Uh, how how can this early warning system help? I mean, to what extent can it really help? 
the problem in the earthquake is that the, the people lost time to, uh, in case an earthquake comes in the building, to make the calculation what, how big is the intensity now, right. and they wait, and they wait, and wait, and lost. No, in case to make uh, rules with the faith family before, the behaviors, and we have only eight seconds, yes, you can start direct to a safety place or you run outside, depending where, where you live, and this is a little time that you, have, that you can save your life. Okay, so we move into a safety place. So now this talks about guidelines for buildings, to develop buildings that can give you at least uh, that eight second warning that we can probably get. Uh, our, our buildings have to be designed in such a way that we can at least go to these safety places. Uh, are we on that track? Uh, we are way behind in, uh, in assessing their performance in real sense. So that is the reason that even if a warning system is giving eight seconds or ten seconds of time, only locally we can say that we can fix up by some drill or by some exercise uh, that within eight to ten seconds at least once uh, people are given the warning through siren or some kind of indications at least they will be shown a place where they can at least hide themselves or they can keep themselves safe and that is why uh, some kind of mock drills and some kind of assessment in the building itself uh, has to be done First thing is that whether the building itself is structurally uh, safe or not. Uh, that is a million dollar question, which not a single uh, means uh, expert in our country will be able to uh, say so, these things. Mr. More. Yogan, your, your instrument has been installed in some countries across yeah. the world. How successful have these models been? What are the feedback you've got? People are very happy about this. We got every time the information system gives an alarm. Uh, First of all, where have you installed it? In which countries? Uh, in 25 countries at the moment. Uh, okay. Our system give alarm in. Let's talk about what. Have you put it in Indonesia? That's Indonesia, the country where we see a lot of earthquakes yeah. similar to India in Taiwan, some ways. Taiwan, US, uh, Chile, Peru. Some developing Uruguay, countries. Yes, Europe, okay. Uh, a lot of, therefore, we got uh, the information from the whole world about earthquakes. A big earthquake is not so often. Therefore, we put our needle, our detector in the earthquake countries that we got the information, the system is working well. And therefore, I'm very proud that we have now a, a real earthquake warning system. Okay, but uh, how does the, your system uh, differentiate between, you know, normal rumblings and a heavy earthquake? And there's some yes. people say that that's not possible. You know, you, uh, is it possible, honestly? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, in case uh, the a big earthquake has a, has a frequency from 0 to 20 hertz and uh, acceleration. We look to this two point and other things also. But in case that we take this, then our system detect uh, higher frequency, then this is a, a other vibration or a, a small intensity. And also we have, uh, again, sports alarm that we can connect two detectors up to 15, 16 detectors in one net. Okay. Therefore, we make it very safe against false alarm. Okay. So, but uh, we talk, I mean, this 8 sec second uh, uh, forewarning that you're giving us is only for 40 kilometers away. Uh, what happens to the epicenter? There's no possibility of any warning you can get there. You're right. The people there don't have any seconds. But we can shut off the gas, for example, or chemical industry wells that automatically we stop it. No gas come outside. It's very important that we don't have fire after an earthquake. Okay. Therefore, we need this system. So, uh, ultimately, I mean, the system just gives you a little bit of a warning, but now if we have to shut down systems in our, in, in our country within that period of time, we require them to be integrated into uh, various other systems. Uh, are we planning to do something like that? Uh, this is Japan, a, I think, has a model where yeah. you know everything stops. Everything stops there, even gas supply. Even they can apply automatic brake to the bullet trains that which are running. Uh, so in India, in fact, all our big industries, especially refineries or even even oil industries, uh, even in the nuclear power stations, as far as uh, they have their safety devices of their own, that emergency operation they can stop. And so, uh, in that cases, even power houses, like in many of the power houses, uh, where uh, you know uh, 
water is coming and uh, wheels are running there. So all those system can be coupled with such kind of devices uh, uh, where uh, you know they can be stopped uh, for further uh, de uh, say devastation, secondary devastations. So in that case, uh, such kind of warning system uh, can be coupled with the existing safety system uh, in in nuclear power or powerhouses, and then. Uh, we can uh, we can ensure that uh, such uh, warning systems are taken with the more positive spirit uh, for further damages or further uh, uh, you know uh, problems uh, which comes up as a cascading effect uh, from, uh, due to earthquake. You're watching a discussion on early warning systems in earthquakes. Uh, we're taking a short break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, well, Mr. Jogan, uh, you know I mean. One of the concerns is that this is a standalone machine. So how do you inform the entire city uh, that there's going to be an earthquake? It has to be networked? No, no, it's not uh, a network. It's, uh, we, work, we work by bus cable. OK. Yes. Uh, and we don't save data. It doesn't save data, no. We don't save data. We make the analyze, and then we say alarm. The people are not interested in data. The scientists are very interested in data, but, but the people are interest in, in warning. Right, so it gives off a siren which uh, will uh, help these people to save themselves. But the point is that, I mean, each machine will do that. But, uh, you know, I mean, we have to have, what, uh, hundreds of machines across the city then to have, uh, to get that warning across. You can install, in, yes, you, you can install in every building, for example, two, two devices okay. connected with the building management system if they have. And from the building management system, you can control the complete building. So right. It's very helpful for every building. Also, you can create network that you can make public warning outside. Okay. Now, for instance, I'm mean in a building, let's say a hotel, for instance, where yeah. it has hundreds of rooms. Uh, how will the if you have two of your systems there? Uh, how will it be? How would each person in the hotel know that there is likely to be an earthquake? Yes, this is very important. The system doesn't work alone. We must train the people, the staff in the hotel, for example, in kind of alarm what you can do. We create safety places. Then we give, for example, a hotel at loudspeakers. We don't give a signal by siren. We send it to the signal to the BMS. And about the announcement, the guest will inform there is an earthquake. Please open the, for example, please open the hotel. Uh, door and go outside to a safety place. Okay. They can run to the elevator and in this corner there are a lot of pillars and they are safe. How much research is being done, uh, Mr. Ghosh, about these kind of systems and uh, developing guidelines, projects, uh, buildings for the future which uh, incorporate everything for the building to have a safety certificate? In India, especially if I talk about Delhi, uh, here uh, building bylaws and uh, use of the building bylaws and use of the proper codal provisions which is not mandatory but recommendatory. So in these cases even having a earthquake safe or earthquake resistant construction is a bigger challenge than setting such kind of alarm system uh, in some of the selected buildings. There are many places which may be subjected many uh, such important strategic building like parliament house or you can say uh, some of the uh, places like Kutub Minar. Uh, or there are many other establishments uh, which, uh, you know, they are of special importance and strategic uh, uh, safety precautions can be taken. But the challenge is that whether Parliament House is uh, seismically uh, resistant or seismically uh, uh, say strong enough or not, how to check that, uh, that kind of assessment has to be done as the first place because such kind of instruments will be placed in those buildings uh, which has, uh, which we know about their health conditions, especially how they are likely how to be. How can that sort of an assessment be done? Uh -huh. Can so, it be done? How how can it be done? What's the scientific way to go about it? Uh -huh. So that kind of assessment uh, is being done. Even NIDM also did number of such exercise about 10,000 buildings in East Delhi. Only thing is that whatever building that we have surveyed, it is only visually we have checked. In some of the buildings, we have checked with some of the. Uh, like ultrasonic uh, sound, ultrasonic pulse velocity meter. Somewhere we have checked with that how reinforcement are placed inside, reinforcement scanner. So it is a really very, very difficult exercise. But scientifically, yes, there are tools and instruments 
which can be used systematically uh, to check the health condition of the building and then we can reanalyze that in the software and to check that yes they are resistant or not. We must put uh, also the system in, in the hospitals, uh, fire departments, these people save their life and can help the other people. Right. Now, uh, well, this is early days for your sort of technology, so we can see that there are likely to be improvements over time. But uh, this is still in the warning uh, category. I mean, uh, are we going to be able to predict earthquakes in the future? I mean, you as a scientist and inventor, do you think that's possible? Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, uh, if we can say next month yes. comes an earthquake, this is important that the people can prepare of this. Absolutely. You don't can say, I think so, next day, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, you're uh, giving us only a few seconds. Yeah, but yeah. you need the magnitude, you need the place, the intensity on the place, the time. Uh, but in case you say next month comes, comes an earthquake, big intensity daily, then the people can check the system. They need the system then. Right. They can check the system and make a duel with the family or with, with the staff and then but is it scientifically possible? Is it scientifically possible? Not that you know of. Not, not a signal. I think what do I you would think? say in other yes. way, uh, we have almost entire world has identified which are the seismic sensitive zone. Absolutely. As you have said, you have rightly mentioned about 60 percent area are earthquake prone areas, seismic zone 3, 4, 5. So, and also we know that what are the past history of occurrence of earthquake in that region. So it is, uh, but when it is going to happen, uh, is not the main question now for the people who are making buildings or who develops the building or who constructs the building. We need to take another short break. You are watching a discussion on early warning systems for earthquakes. Do stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, well, Mr. Yogan, uh, since you come from Germany, uh, not an earthquake prone area, uh, how did you come up with this kind of a technology there? And did you, how, how did you test it? Yes. Uh, you are right, Germany is not a earthquake country like, like India. Um, but we have good scientists also in Germany. Uh, GFZ Potsdam is the famous uh, in Germany. And they have developed, uh, for example, the tsunami early warning system in Southeast Asia. And with this gentleman, uh, Professor Schau, in person, we have developed this system. We have made a test of shaking table with small intensities, big intensities.